It doesn't look like an ideal habitat for a hummingbird, but for part of the year, it is. This is the Costas hummingbird, and like all hummingbirds, packed within its tiny form is a superhero of a bird and a giant personality. With their flashy plumage and a stunning courtship display, they are the birds of paradise of the New World. They were named by French naturalist Jules Bercier in honor of his friend, Louis-Marie Pantaleon Costa de Beauregard. Hummingbirds are found only in the Americas and are in the family Trochilidae. Their scientific name is Calypti costae. It can be difficult to tell some hummingbirds apart, but the male Costas stands out. He has a vibrant purple crown and an equally stunning gorget that flares out to the sides. Light green feathers on his front resemble the appearance of a vest. The female lacks the purple feathers and is light gray on the front with hues of green, yellow, and teal on her back. Juvenile males have a lighter vest and a developing gorget without the flares or purple crown. Costas are on the smaller side for hummingbirds, bigger than a calliope, but smaller than an anna's. They are about three and a half inches long and weigh only about three grams. That's as much as three paper clips. They are stout and compact and have the appearance of having a thick neck or hunched posture. Their tails are also short, barely meeting the length of their short wings. Costas are at home in the Sonoran and Mojave deserts of the American Southwest, the California coast, the Baja Peninsula, and the small part of the western coast of Mexico. Some stay in the coastal areas year-round. Others migrate deeper into the desert in preparation for the breeding season, which starts in late winter and early spring. This is when flowers are plentiful and temperatures are more mild. Come mid-June, however, nectar supplies dwindle and the heat becomes intense. They return to the coast where flowers are reliably abundant and temperatures are less extreme. Their diet consists of nectar and small flying insects. They visit a variety of different desert and coastal plants, but their favorites are the chuparosa and ocotillo. Why these two plants? Well, the chuparosa, also known as the hummingbird bush, is found throughout the desert. It has a lengthy flowering period and is a reliable source of midwinter and spring nectar. A single mature plant can have anywhere from 100 to 500 open flowers. The ocotillo is widespread and flowers reliably and massively during March and April, coinciding with their breeding season. Its name translates to little torch in Spanish due to the flaming red blossoms found on the tips of its branches. Brightly colored tubular shaped flowers are ideal for hummingbird bills. They hold greater quantities of nectar, plus it keeps them interacting with pollen for longer periods of time. They have a symbiotic relationship with these plants. The plant provides the hummingbird with sustenance and the hummingbird pollinates the plant. Territory defense may occur during any time of the year, but most definitely during the breeding season. The male perches on the perimeter of his territory and makes a high-pitched whistle to warn potential intruders to stay away. Within his boundaries are abundant sources of nectar-rich, flowering plants. When it comes time for courtship, the male performs what is known as the looping, dive, and whistle display. Occasionally, this serves as a threat display to another male, but most often, it is performed to attract a female. He begins by making a loop around her, followed by a swift vertical ascent and then swoops back down again, making a high-pitched whistling sound. He does this for about 30 seconds, but it can last for up to four minutes. The whistling sound isn't coming from the vocal cords, but from his tail feathers. Towards the bottom of the dive, he fans his tail feathers, which creates a shrill, high-pitched chirp. The faster the dive, the more the tail feathers vibrate, and the higher the pitch. And if that doesn't catch her attention, he hovers in front of her with his radiant gorget flared, 
all the while moving his body from one side to the other. There's a lot that goes into this display. First, he has to be in the right angle to the sun's rays to show off his glowing plumage. Second, researchers hypothesize that it is the contraction of muscles under the skin that allows these feathers to stand out. And third, this gravity-defying stunt demands so much of his energy that he actually holds his beak open to take in more oxygen. This is yet another fine example of the super abilities of hummingbirds. If they weren't incredible enough already, add to the list their ability to go into torpor. They have extremely fast metabolisms and need constant feeding to survive. To get through nights when temperatures are low, they go into semi-hibernation to conserve energy. Their normal heart rate of 500 to 900 beats per minute drops to a mere 50 beats per minute. A decrease in body temperature also comes along with this. If you live in the range of the costas and find one hanging upside down from a feeder or a tree branch, just let it be. It will come out of torpor on its own. The costas hummingbird, and all hummingbirds for that matter, are truly amazing creatures. Have you ever seen a Costas hummingbird or witnessed their marvelous courtship display? If you have, I'd love to hear about your experience. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.